Everybody, here's Henry Lee at BlueHeronArts.com. We are uh, doing a demo of uh, experimental landscape painting on mulberry paper. Um, if you uh, are interested in um, using this paper, please stay on. I'll try to explain some common uh, asked questions and. Uh, um, Problems. I just got a call from a customer in Virginia. She's taking class from a teacher uh, in landscape painting and uh, um, tried to order the same paper that uh, her teacher is uh, using um, and uh, found the paper are somehow different from the teachers. So this is a very common phenomena um, or problem. Um, that we we may face um, with uh, Chinese uh, handmade rice paper and the uh, mulberry paper, um, the quality is not consistent because uh, it varies from meal to meal, or from batch to batch. Um, sometimes in the same box, it could be varied in thickness because it's all handmade. Um, so if you like a paper. Uh, yourself, you might stock up um, just in case we run out of it. But you know, the same kind of paper always have a general characteristic, like the texture, uh, absorbency. Uh, but it might vary, like I said, um, from uh, batch to batch. The uh, it could be um, more absorbent or less absorbent. Uh, the thickness may vary, um, but you know I turned to be not to I I become not too picky on my paper, so uh, I always adapt to the new paper, and it's always uh, feel refreshed to use new paper. Um, anyway, I'm going to start this demo. Uh, here here's the uh, painting I did before uh, with. Uh, Western watercolor on mulberry paper and that mounted uh, with silicone backing paper and uh, just an example of what uh, what we will try to to do. Uh, okay, but it could be different. So we we have basically two kinds of uh, uh, mulberry paper here. They come in uh, a size. I call it a medium size because the large, uh, traditional sh large sheet is uh, about uh, 30 by 58 or 57, or 27 by 57. Uh, this paper is like a, a one third, so it's a 18 by 27 or 19 by 30. They vary a little bit. Like mulberry number one. Medium size is a 30 by 19. Uh, I'm going to cut this. The difference is between the two is the the texture. You can see mulberry number two has a rough stringing fiber that you can see like uh, veins in the in the paper. Um, we use this. I would recommend for landscape painting. This the the rough texture. Uh, the other one, mulberry number one, is uh, smoother. You can also use for landscape. You know, like uh, this one I did on mulberry number one it has no stringing fiber because uh, if you paint on small size, maybe that's uh, that's good to have a finer. Uh, it's really. Um, Personal preference, I think you can use uh, for anything. Uh, so let me show you the difference and some technique of using it. Okay, I, I'll torn the paper or cut the paper with a, a bamboo, a bamboo paper cutter. So let me just cut it. Let me keep it small so we can be more focused. To see more details, uh, I may cut this for the just for demo purpose. I just 
it is small. Okay, and uh, I'll also cut this one in half. So this is about uh, 18 by 30 and a half. Uh, it's good. Good size. It's about one sixth of the large parent sheets. This is a medium, uh, medium size sheet. So let me cut that one. So we have mobile number one and the number two. Um, it's reportedly more absorbent uh, than before. So uh, let's see. Uh, you can take advantage of that, uh, but for some technique, it might uh, affect, but uh, for me, it's uh, not a big uh, difference. Even, you know, uh, with, let me just try first. You can try the absorbency with water. Let's see what happens. Let's see if it smears. It does smear a little bit with water. So I use a black felt. You can see better the water, just clean water, right? Uh, it starts to bleed, so that's indication of absorbency uh, with number one. So it, it does. Um, in the age, like uh, in the 60s, when Fu Bao Shi, Master Fu Bao Shi is uh, using this paper, it's supposed to be like that. So in the early, uh, mid 70s, when I started painting, I used this kind of paper too. So it, it, it smears like, uh, like this. But, uh, um, these days, they try to maybe uh, produce for different market like Japan or Korea. The paper tend to be more um, non-absorbent. I think there's a call someone. We'll take it with answer machine. Anyway, um, so this does smears so that. That's good or bad, you know, depends on how you um, use it. But some batch may tend to be less absorbent, like the mulberry number A, the large sheet, uh, could be less absorbent because they might, they're, they're from a, a different, uh, uh, could be a different meal, a different uh, batch. Okay, this, this number two, let's see, it less smear. For some reason, I think. Let's see. Yeah, they come from the same time that you know it. It is less smear. So if you like less absorbent, get number two uh, for this batch. I'm making this video on April fifth, two thousand eighteen, as we speak. We we are uh, selling this paper in the size of. Uh, uh, 18 by tw uh, 27 or 19 by 30, I think, uh, approximately. Uh, you can check more detail. So this paper does show difference in absorbency. I may change the, uh, the description later after this experiment. So uh, this is semi-absorbent. This is more uh, on the absorbent side, which is a good thing. You know, if we paint a blue heron, I like to use mulberry number one. Uh, blue heron is my favorite subject matter. So I use a super wash brush with a uh, convenient ink cake, which is uh, what I use with a student pack these days. Uh, somebody asked me uh, in my class how to use it. Here's how you just uh, use water to um, wipe it, you know, to um, brush it off from the, the ink, ink cake. Um, you can use a palette, a saucer or something to, to see the value. So if you need a, a more, you can spray some ink or just use uh, ex some excessive water to dampen the, the surface and then you get more ink. In, in blue heron painting, we use uh, light ink to do the body. So, uh, this is just water sprout spots. You see that? So I'll show you this paper here. So I, I, I my title says uh, landscape. So I try to keep it small so I can 
still do a landscape thing. Here, here's the body of the, the, the bird, I think. So we just keep it small. I better use a smaller brush. To So I just got inspiration from this water stain. So this is the hatchback of the blue heron. You want to use a little ink to confirm that. Okay. You just have to move faster on absorbent paper. What you do is you use uh, some uh, uh, tissue. Uh, I just, in this case, I just use some uh, scrub. Uh, Wasted painting to uh, dry it, get the excessive water off. You know, sometimes you can make it split. You can you can use your finger to fill it to shape the brush. This is how I get the dry effect. So if it's too absorbent, you can use dry brush. Dry brush. Okay, and just just do another. Uh, I think I would just do one for now. Uh, I tend not to use the ink, but you can if you use bottled ink. Uh, just drop a little ink, drip a little on the palette or ink stone. Even though I don't use ink stone for grinding, I use that as a container. So I use a small, uh, not small, uh, just basic, basic uh, wolf hair brush. Add the beak and uh, the leg. So you have to keep it very dry, so, and you can uh, control the, the smearing by uh, timing. If you don't want to smear wet more, so you will smear less. If you want to create a fairy effect, do it uh, wet into wet, so that you get that. Uh, just glide on, you know, very gently, not not press too much, so that way you get, uh, you, you control somehow the smear on the absorbent paper. Another bird. Anybody watching? Let me check. Okay, I'll keep doing this. So, one heron, two herons. I'm going to do a workshop uh, on this. Uh, the 10th of April in San Diego. So this is my practice session also. And you do the wisp. Like that. So I try to make it into a landscape uh, as advertised. Let me see, you don't see the legs. Remove this. Uh, some uh, uh, light color ink to do the background. Uh, let's do a little bit uh, reeds, maybe. I'll just use watercolor because uh, 
The green is ready. It's self green or what is it called? Hooker's green. So I just use this dry up you know, over time too, like you want Chinese watercolor too. You can still use it, I think. And you can mix a little bit brown. or blue to, to vary it. This is like painting the uh, orchid. So be very um, careful or control the uh, water in your brush. Uh, um, this uh, more absorbent version of uh, mulberry paper, but it's good that you can you know make uh, all the soft, gentle uh, washes with it with this this uh, absorbent paper. The rice paper, Chinese rice paper, always uh, tend to be absorbent, and then that's the difference, you know, from the Western watercolor. We don't really do the the, the uh, refraction, but I try to. Speaking of watercolor, I try to do it. Just use a little little gray. I mix <laughs> some blue with the brown. Just uh, very a little bit from the ink. Okay, now uh, you can use uh, uh, a soft brush, like a basic. Uh, Goat hair brush for the background. This is just clean water when I test it. Don't worry about that, it will disappear. Um, <coughs> just very light color for the distance. So, this is like indigo dilute with water. In this case, I do want it to, to, uh, to be soft. This is we in landscape painting we call it opening, opening of uh, composition. You know the on one corner and the the uh, the chi goes goes to that direction, and then we close it with a, a horizon. You can do it uh, just like that, and then a uh, little mountain. There's a peak. Let's just soften that a little bit. That's a that's close. <coughs> okay, that's the the bottom. That's the top. You can paint some uh, flying birds. You can use a smaller brush. We have a small uh, whistle brush. Notice the rhythm. So the the distance between the the, the birds.
Okay, I'm going to uh, do another one on this uh, this uh, mobile number two. Okay, um, let's do it horizontally. Maybe let me put this aside to let it dry. I'll use uh, uh, you can do the if work first. So let's use the ink cake. This is the ink cake. Ho hope you can see it. You just brush off. So I don't really uh, use too much ink uh, um, to start with. So we start from the darkest point. In landscape, you can start from uh, uh, blocks of uh, ink standing for the mountain or forest, or you can start from the rock. Or same time, you know. The, so when the brush is wet, you you just you just make it dry uh, by painting trees, I guess. Then when the brush is is um, Getting dry, do the rocks. So the rock texture uh, is easy to get. In this case, you can see. I I don't reload until the brush is exhausted. And when the brush is dry, I do the mountain foot with the mist uh, arise to so make it uh, rough as preparation for the mist okay so when you paint um, wet you always go dry first that's my teacher uh, told me and before it gets dry you, you use water to extend it to This paper is definitely more uh, on the uh, non-observant side, so you can see it does not. Uh, it, it is absorbent, but uh, not uh, spread that much than mobile number one, which is good because mobile number one we use that we could use that for just like a water, uh, like a rice paper could could use for painting flowers and the birds. Uh, this. Number two, with rough, rough uh, texture, you can use for landscape. Wet into wet to make it smear. Also, the uh, ink cake is not overnight ink. It's a, it tends to be uh, more granny, less as absorbent, which is good uh, for landscape painting to get more texture, granny texture. So some wet into wet. You can use that to for for ascent. There's no single source of uh, light, but we we consider um, yin yang contrast. You know, like uh, the yang. Uh, is the, the light, the yin is the dark contrast. So you paint one side of the contour in, in, uh, to, to, to contrast with the other. So we normally paint the upper side, which is uh, yang, yin. 
to control to make this part yang, and then uh, you can paint the yang, the yin, the, the shady under it. Okay, it's just alternating the two different. It's hard to describe yin and yang, uh, but it's co basically contrast between dark and the light. And the 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 movement is very we call it a dragon man. You should keep a whole uh, mountain range in mind. So they all kind of holds together, not just the isolated uh, shapes, triangular shapes. Lots of dry strokes in landscape. So this is the advantage of mobile paper. You don't worry about tearing the, the paper. And the brushes become split, which is good. A little mountain uh, above the cloud. Cloud sea, we call it. Cloud is like water. Come from evaporated evaporate water, I think. Yeah. So it, it's uh, considered uh, water. Land, landscape of uh, uh, Chinese landscape is known as the water and the mountain, mountain and the water. So the clouds is part of the, the in uh, water. You have the a main a host mountain here and a guest to close it. Balance, check it, and balance. With this mountain, we can just use uh, uh, some blue to, to close that. Sky and horizon could be the same. It could be more like a water or clouds, sea, kind of blue in the uh, area perspective. Uh, you know, the distant mountains become more bluish. And you can add some uh, warm color. Uh, I happen to have some uh, burnt sienna, I think. I'll just use that. And I use dry mounting, so I don't worry about uh, the smear you might get when you wet mount it. Clean my palette, as I always do. In landscape painting, I always use uh, the many co color to just clean it, my palette. Don't lose all the pockets of white. And you, some part, it, if it's too too wet, you need to wait it till uh, dries to add. You 
get the wind. Okay, um, let's just show you the effect. I can uh, mount it and then we, we can uh, do some more if you need it. Uh, this is too small. Just use small one to crop it. Somehow we don't need this big. So it's still still wet. Uh, let me just show you. I'll crop off that uh, that side on the right. Normally you should wet it dry to do it, but you could just mount it when it's still wet, if you like the effect, because it, it may still evolving. So. This is the experiment. Okay, I think I I will crop this off. And uh, you can you should use a piece of paper to protect the top. Just cover it. I just blot it first. It, it will take some moisture off. That's okay. And then cover it. Iron. The, the only thing I'm worried is this part should be dry. It looks dry, feels dry, so it's okay. Otherwise, it will become wrinkled because the, the back of the silicone paper is uh, uh, absorbent, so you want to keep away from moisture. And uh, oh, that looks promising. Okay. <coughs> One 
when you do it, uh, you should wait it dry and then spray some water to um, mount it. Make sure this this side is dry. If it you know got water, you may create uh, wrinkles. I can t trim this off later. That looks uh, more balanced. Now you can add more uh, details like uh, tree trunks to make the tree standing. Indicate the, the proportion somehow. Um, I think we could do some more trunk there. So this suddenly become trees. This suggesting the trees there. Exhaust the brush again. <laughs> and add water if you need to clean the brush. Just soften a little bit. And then you iron it again. You don't have to actually. It's already been mounted, so it, 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 when you add a little, little uh, paint, it should be fine. Maybe just use a scissor to cut this. Oh, could do it later. So this is the, the back. I normally don't iron this side, but you you can if you want. Another thing, another thing you can do is to transfer this onto um, a piece of watercolor paper and continue. So uh, this is uh, what I do. This is not permanent. Uh, supposedly it's a release paper because it's not going to stay forever. It's like this. You can peel it off. This is the back of the, the painting, okay? And this is the, the release paper. All right, so this this painting now is uh, uh, semi-absorbent, you might say, because uh, it has the silicone on the other side, blocking the moisture from penetrating or spray, uh, spread. So this becomes semi-absorbent. You can still paint on this side. The absorbency is not sealed on the front. Uh, what I do is I mount it, um, transfer it on a piece of uh, watercolor paper, or you can use any other drawing paper, Bristol paper. Okay, this is how I do it. Okay, it becomes smaller. That's good, I think. I will have to trim it off further. Um, just experiment, you know. So you start from large and then become smaller, smaller. You can even use partial paper to make a painting. So when I paint out landscape, I always come out okay because you can trim it, crop it. All right. So I use the release paper on top of the painting and then iron again to transfer the, paper, the painting now onto its permanent support uh, with a piece of uh, watercolor paper. Now I can call this the watercolor painting because it's a it's collage on, on watercolor paper, right? And I did use watercolor, regular watercolor, 
not uh, Chinese water color, because I use dry mounting. Uh, it, it's okay not you know to bleed. All right. So, oops. Now you can see a problem <laughs> that supposed uh, to be avoided. You see the the, the silicone stick on the felt. Uh, so you could trim it before you you iron it. That will avoid this. It's not a big deal, but uh, you know it doesn't really create serious problem, but it happens because the silicone is larger than the backing paper. It will stick on the on the uh, padding. <clears throat> All right. So this one looks like a. I can trim that off to watercolor painting, okay? And you can have some uh, more painting if you need it. Uh, I'll just sign it. I'll just sign it to complete. Uh, you can call it. Uh, I put a poem by one way, the famous uh, town poet. Uh, it says uh, <coughs> the the river runs uh, beyond the horizon, um, and mountain appear uh, in between. Yo uh, wu means uh, exist and non-existence. It's a very philosophical poem. Literally, the river flows um, between uh, outside heaven and earth, beyond heaven and earth, the horizon. You know. And then, San Su, mountain color. Yo, wu. Zhong. Mountain. Shape, uh, form, uh, appear. In um, In yo and wu are uh, there is and there is no, uh, non-existent and non-existent, Pre present on or, not present. So. Uh, that's the poem. Let me just write the year. Sorry, I always write it up. Okay, and uh, my Chinese name is Xiao Hui Li. And I'll use a small seal because on landscape you want to use a very small seal. Just the as small as possible to make it uh, to make the mountain feels good, feels uh, vast. This is a very small seal with my last name Li. Look at that. Completes the painting. Okay, um, let me review what we learned today. Uh, this is the mulberry number one. Uh, I did a uh, heron. Uh, you can use that for landscape or flowers and birds because it's less texture. And this one has more texture with the rough veins of a, a streaming fiber, you can see. So I prefer to use it with a, uh, as landscape, for, for landscape painting. Um, you can use you know, it for any other, like birds or flowers as well, if you like.
more texture. If you have any questions, just let me know uh, in common area or call us, uh, and I'll do another demo to to illustrate and answer your questions. So if you like this paper, stock up. Next time, maybe you know different uh, because the handmade paper uh, varies from batch to batch, uh, from the meal to meal. We cannot really guarantee um, this paper will be the same. If you order it right now, it will get the same paper. The mobile number two is what we did with this landscape. Mobile number one is what we did with uh, the birds. Until next time, goodbye.